Yesterday we talked about some of the poor people who are dying from the coronavirus, who are dying alone, and family members are weeping that they cannot be by their sides. Some people, however, have been fortunate that they do have medical personnel who are with them as they pass. I watched last night on the evening news a charge nurse talking about how she asked her nurses to be very aware that they are representing not just the hospital or the community, but they are standing in the place of family members who wish they could be there but cannot. Who would you want in the room when you die? A morbid question? Well, death is mor a morbid subject, isn't it? But we can't get to Easter without first going through this valley of the shadow of death. Normally, we don't choose when we die, with whom we die, where we die, when we die. Isn't that true of Jesus also? Welcome to the 10th station of pandemic ponderings, when we look at a scripture and then ponder it through the lens of Jesus, through a character or characters in the story, and through our own experience. Today's scripture is taken uh, from Luke's Gospel. There are actually two stations of the cross that we will be looking at today, uh, combining these. One is the tenth station, which is Jesus being put on the cross, and the other is the eleventh station, which is Jesus' conversation with men who are on either side of him on Calvary. So listen to this scripture from Luke chapter 23, beginning with verse 32. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then to verse 39. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. I'm not going to go into the details of crucifixion and what all that meant, partly because Luke and the gospel writers don't do that. They don't give details about it, but we do know it was a horrible way to die, whether the death was through blood loss or asphyxiation or through exhaustion. The cross was a tool of torture that was meant to punish the criminal to de uh, deter future crime and to remind the Jews who was in charge. It was Rome. Jesus knew that this day was coming and he had predicted it and he dreaded it but now here it is, and he is living it. He, throughout the gospel, has seemed to be in charge. Even though Rome think, thinks that it is in charge, Jesus seems to have been in charge of the testimony that he gave to Pilate and to uh, Herod, and also as he is in control, in a sense, with Judas and with the, the other disciples. Uh, he has a lack of control, you might think, with uh, the prayer that he gives in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, but even that, he is in control in that he is saying, I am willing to be obedient to what God's will is. Let's think about the thieves. Luke is the only gospel that goes into the details of a conversation of Jesus and the thieves. One thief follows the lead of his religious leaders that he hears below him who are scorning and mocking Jesus. The irony is 
that when he says, save yourself and us, Jesus is saving him and others, all who would believe in Jesus' plan of salvation, that Jesus uh, came to bring salvation. Jesus' name even means God saves. The first bandit may have been a zealot who this group believed that Israel would be saved, but it would be through a messianic general, someone who would come as a strong and violent military leader. The second thief recognizes Jesus' innocence. And it seems that he believes the sign that has been posted above Jesus' head, King of the Jews. Although there was obviously no evidence to back that up, all he has is faith. He asked Jesus to remember him. The word that he uses for remember is more than factual recollection. It means, keep me in mind. As Jesus had, ha had asked his disciples to do when they took the bread and the wine, keep me in mind, remember me. Jesus is hearing the thief say to him, keep me in mind when you come into your kingdom. Luke Timothy Johnson makes this point. He says, in a sense, the criminal is uttering a vision or a version of the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come. Recognizing his faith, Jesus gives the thief a gift. Today you will be with me in paradise. Pondering ourselves in these days. It was a bad day for these two thieves. One used his circumstances to turn further from God and one used his circumstances to turn closer to God. These days in America, thousands of people are having terrible days as they are losing their lives or loved ones are losing their lives. You may be one who is suffering as a victim of the virus or you may be one who has a loved one who is a victim. I know that as I learn more and more of friends who are victims of this virus, this becomes all too real and very real to me and my own ponderings about my own life. My hope is that in these terrible days that we will have this prayer, this prayer of the second thief on our lips. Lord, keep me in mind. Remember me as you come into your kingdom. Dear God, help us to have the faith that this thief had. Even though things did not look like you were in charge or that you were going to have victory over this battle, he trusted that you would. Help us to have trust in you as well. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.